hands together and bless the Lord in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. We have come to enter into his presence with thanksgiving, which we've already done. Hallelujah. We've created an atmosphere where God has is meeting us. Hallelujah. He's meeting. He's delivered. He's healing. He's setting free. And he has already done so. Hallelujah. As we've gone forth in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is saying that it's already done. <laughs> Whatever you are expecting. Hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. Hallelujah. That, that just keeps ringing in my spirit. It's already done. And sometimes you got to say it before it actually manifests. That it's already done. Why don't you just put it in the atmosphere? It's already done. Hallelujah. It's already done. Whatever you're expecting, hallelujah, whatever you're expecting to walk into, Hallelujah, it's already done. Your healing, it's already done. Your breakthrough, whatever your break, whatever you need God to break through for you, it's already done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Why don't you grab the hand of your neighbor this morning? Hallelujah. And just begin to pray and, re and release strength to them. Release a prayer to them of encouragement prayer of strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your people, God. Thank you for meeting the needs, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. God, for the manifestations of healing, hallelujah, for deliverance, whatever the needs are, Lord, thank you for manifesting now, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Release their hands and begin to praise God. Hallelujah. For it all ready being done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And now, while you're yet standing, let's give God praise for our founding pastor, Bishop Darnell Leach, and our co founding pastor, Anita Leach. Hallelujah. We celebrate you. And happy advanced birthday. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just before I uh, get into the word, I want to um, thank and also acknowledge any first-time guests. Do we have any first-time guests today? Any first-time guests? Hey, man, my brother, how you doing? Glad to have you in worship on today. Someone from, oh, we got two. Hey, man, all right. I missed you. All right. Hey, man. Hallelujah. Someone around you is going to give you a nice, warm, Shiloh, warm welcome. Hallelujah. And embrace. And you're also going to get something in your hand from one of our ushers or our hospitality ministry. Thank you for coming to worship with us on today. Hallelujah. We pray that this worship experience will be meaningful and beneficial to your soul. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, just before I get into the word, I wanted to thank those uh, members who came um, and fellowship with us on last Sunday. Thank you so much as we worship in fellowship with Community Temple on last Sunday. God really met us during that time of praise and worship. It was a wonderful time, and thank you for those who came. Um, 
in fellowship and in worship. Um, thank you, choir. You guys really ministered. Thank you so much. You set the tone for, for that worship service, and we really appreciate you. Thank God for the musicians. Hallelujah. 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 You know, sometimes, and I, and I can say this, um, and I'm going to go ahead and get on with the word, but sometimes we take, I think we take our musicians um, for granted that we just have to do it or they just have to do it. But I'm going to tell you, and I can include myself, we work hard. We work hard as musicians. We work hard, not just for ourselves, but we work hard. We want to honor God. And we do. But we also want to be as a service. It is our ministry to you as a congregation. We help to bring in the presence of God. We help to usher in the presence of God. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. I appreciate you guys. I really do. And Shiloh, we are blessed. We are blessed. Hallelujah. We are blessed. There's some churches who really struggle with that and they have all kinds of mess and I don't want to go into that, but we are blessed. Amen. To have wonderful and skilled musicians that minister to us every week. Amen. Amen. It's something about music. It lifts and it breaks yokes. It helps you, it helps to helps the word to be released. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And one more thing, just want to encourage. Um, our members as we're in our month of impact um, in our Shades of Grace series. Um, has it been a blessing to anyone? Amen. Amen. It's been a, it, I knew it was, a, it was a blessing. It's been a blessing. The women uh, will be talking about touch on this week. Touch. Mmm. Mmm. And we're talking about around the theme of shades of gray. So sometimes, you know, when we're looking at the, 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 the theme of shades of gray, and we're going to get to the word, you know, there's sometimes there's things that are questionable, you know, with the saints. That's right. And we need to know and how to, how to embrace what we should not embrace <laughs> in our Christian walk. And that's all I'm going to say about that. That's just a little, a little preview in Tibet. And the brothers will be sharing as well on this week, as well as the youth uh, youth and young adults, if you don't bring them, they will not be able to get ministered to. And I'm talking about the youth now. Um, there is ministry in place, and um, it, is, it will be beneficial to them uh, if you bring them. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Got quiet in here. <laughs> Amen. That's all I'm going to say about that. Amen. Um, I want to go to the word. In the 118th Psalm. The 118th Psalm, God gave this to me, and I, I had been wrestling with it for a minute, and I uh, was praying and wondering when, when God would, would um, want to speak this, and uh, I believe this is the day that uh, God wants to share this word with us. In the 118th Psalm, and uh, I'm going to start at verse number 17, and uh, I want to read it today from the Message Bible, Eugene Peterson's Message Bible, which is going to read just a little bit differently from, well, actually, it's going to read differently from the King James and also our NIV version. Verse number 17, it says, I didn't die. I lived. I didn't die. I lived. And now I'm telling the world what God did. God tested me. He pushed me hard. But he didn't hand me over to death. Swing wide the city gates, the righteous gates. I'll walk right through and thank God. This temple gate belongs to God. 
so the victors can enter and praise. Back to number 17. I didn't die. I lived. Why don't you look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, I lived through it. I lived through it. And some of us and many of us are living through it right now. If the truth be told, we're some of us in process. Some of us have already came out with the victory, but there's some of us who are in process. But for this morning, I lived through it. God would not allow you to die because, number one, he wants to use your testimony. <laughs> he would not let you die where you were because he wants to use your testimony. He wants to use your story. He wants to use, as I've been preaching for a minute, he wants to use your prophetic voice. <laughs> he wants to use what God, what he has done for you to now tell somebody else. Hallelujah. Many have gone through so many experiences in life. And when you sit back and you, and you take a retrospective view, many of us probably can ask ourselves, I don't know how I made it. <laughs> I don't know how I made it. Because we realize that it wasn't our strength, but it was the strength of God who brought us through. And he's bringing us through. And he's keeping us while we're in the process. Hallelujah. It's because of his goodness and his mercy. Glory to God. The first point I want to leave with you is God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your life. The first question is, okay, well, what is purpose? Well, purpose, it is the reason why you exist. And it is also inclusive of what one does by self-determination. It's the reason why you exist, and it is by one's self determination. You were born on purpose. You were born for a specific reason. And God wants again to use you for his purpose. He wants to use you for his glory. We, just, we are just not occupying space. But God has a specific design for each one of our lives. Now, sometimes it takes some of us a little longer to find out what God's purpose is for our life. However, God, it is God's desire that we find our purpose in life. It's, it, it, it's a sad statement if we just be born, live life, but then don't have or live life with purpose. And I believe God wants us to live life with purpose and also on purpose, not just uh, 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 haphazard or haphazardly, but God wants us to live life on purpose. Do you know what your purpose is? That's a good question to ponder. Do you really know what your purpose is? That's a question to ponder this week. Do you know what your purpose is? It's more to life than what you see. There's more to life 
than what you can perceive in your own natural mind. But God wants to use us even through our self-determination. That means God has given us a will. He's given us a will to do. Now, God has plans for our lives, and we must be um, willing to find out, okay, God, and ask, God, what is your plan for my life? What is your plan for my life? Am I fulfilling your purpose while I'm here? Am I fulfilling your purpose? I've become, as I've become more mature, I've learned that, you know, even some things that we do and some things that we spend our time in doing, it really doesn't matter if it doesn't line up with God's purpose and God's will for our life. So that's why a lot of times I, there's some things I dismiss myself from. <laughs> there's, there's, there's just some things I just dismiss myself from. from. And also, and I'm going to add to that, sometimes there's some people that we have to dismiss ourselves from. There's some people that are just unhealthy for you. There's some people who don't have your best interests at heart. And you know what you need to do? Cut them off. If they're not beneficial to your purpose, if they're not bringing something or adding something to your life, as we used to say, I ain't using you. <laughs> and you know you can do that very, very um, conveniently. <laughs> you just cut them off. <laughs> and some of us need to take our cell phones out and delete some numbers. Some of us need to delete some of those Twitter followers. Young people. Older people, I had to do it myself. I kept getting these funny, nasty tweets, you know, Twitter. And I said, the devil. So you know what I did? I unfollowed it. Unfollowed this person, whoever they was. Even on Facebook. You just have to cut yourself off to keep yourself free. <laughs> to keep yourself free. God has a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Everyone should not have an invitation to occupy your time. <laughs> Everyone should not have an invitation to occupy your time because we should be leading a life of purpose and a purpose-driven life. I've learned that God has a purpose for everything. And he has a purpose for every, even everything that we go through. Despite every disappointment, despite every failure, <laughs> there's purpose even in failure. I, I found out, and that, and that, that's a, that is a funny paradigm. There is purpose <laughs> in failure. Because what it does, it, it, it allows you to get realigned. <laughs> To, to get in line with God's purpose. So you know what? It's okay to fail. And we don't talk about failure a lot at church. But it's okay to fail because you know what? It's God's opportunity to realign you and to get you straight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It had a purpose. It had a specific design for your life, despite the way that you had to go, despite the choice and the choices that some of us made, <laughs> it had a purpose. Yeah. Hallelujah. It had a purpose. Despite what it looks like right now, you have to even declare that it's working for my good. It may not feel good right now. It may be a messy process, but you have to remind and speak to yourself that, God, I'm going to trust you. I know you're going to work this thing out because, God, I'm, I am trying to live on purpose. Some of us are really trying to live on purpose. Amen. He's given us the power to do, 
self-determination. He's given us the wherewithal to do, to live on purpose. We have to declare things to be so despite what we see even with our natural eyes. We have the power. There is a miracle in our mouths. And that, that, that miracle ability basically means that we have authority. We have authority. Shiloh, do we have authority? Do you have authority? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you have authority? And what did they say? <laughs> I have authority. Hallelujah. I got the power of the Holy One. I have the power of Jesus Christ living and abiding within me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why we have to see things through the spiritual eyes. Hallelujah. Through the spiritual eyes. Look for God in everything. Even when sometimes when you don't understand it. <laughs> look for God in everything. And I've learned when you look for God in everything, he'll show up. <laughs> he will show up. Sometimes it may seem like it's late. <laughs> and we ask questions of God. God, where are you in this? He's there. He's there. He's working. He's moving. He's, he's prompting us. And we have to learn how to look for God in everything because he will show up. All of us have gone through something in life. And you may be even in the process or in the middle of something right now. But know that God, he knows where you are, and he understands what you're going through. We have to know and also realize that even through that, some things just had to happen. Some things just had to happen. Because you know why it had to happen? It had to happen because God wanted to show up in the middle of it. He wanted you to turn your attention to him. That's why it had to happen. So, again, some things we question God. Well, God, why did this? God, God is saying, I had to allow it to happen because I had to show up in the middle of it. So then you would know how to depend on me. That's what God is saying. And it's said to us, we got to learn how to rely and depend on him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We have to realize that God gives us even the power to rise from our circumstances. Whatever you've gone through in life, whatever your experience has been, Whatever failure, whatever success, God allowed it to happen. Yes. He allowed it to happen. He allowed you to live through that experience. Because he has an assignment on your life. He allowed you to survive whatever your experience was <laughs> because you have an assignment. That, that, in essence, will preach all by itself. You have an assignment. <sighs> you have an assignment on your life. You have purpose. I'm trying to hit this thing home, y'all. I really want us to know and understand that we live through it because God allowed us to live through it because we have an assignment. Some things could not happen. Some things would not happen because God has an assignment on our life. Hallelujah. 
some of us are going through um, crazy experiences. Things that we didn't expect. Some of us are going, going through things <laughs> that we went through previously in a, in a previous season. <laughs> but you know what? There is a purpose even for why you're going through what you're going through right now. There is a purpose. There is a reason. Hallelujah. And you know why? Because God has a purpose that he is going to fulfill over your life. But here's the thing. You got to hang in there. You got to hang in the process. You got to hang in there with, with some perseverance. You got to hang in there with some deeper faith. And trust God that he is going to bring you through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is going to bring you through. Despite what you're going through right now. Despite what it looks like. God has a purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has a purpose. But the second thing I want to leave with you is there was a, design, there was a divine purpose even for the test. There was a divine purpose even for the test that you went through. We must realize that if God allowed it to happen, <laughs> that it must be profitable. There must be something good coming out of this. <laughs> you got to look at it with the spiritual eye that it, God must be doing something in me. It's going to be beneficial to me. Even sometimes, you know, we have to bring ourselves um, to acknowledge that, you know, there are some things that we brought even on ourselves. Bad decisions, um, hooking up with the wrong people, allowing people into your space that are not profitable or beneficial to your spiritual growth. We have to be good stewards over our own soul with the help of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God, he allows grace and his mercy to withstand the test. Hallelujah. His grace and his mercy, it allows us to the, the ability to withstand the test. And a test really, it, it, it can be de defined as a critical examination. But here's the other part of it. It also measures one's skill and ability. God is examining many of us to see what our response is going to be. God has caused a test to come in our lives at a, as a point, as a reference of critical examination to see what our response is going to be. But also with that, God wants to see how much faith we have. <laughs> he wants to see how much skill we have in using and operating in our faith. Oh Hallelujah. God also uses tests to examine our motive, to allow us to see what's in us, but then also to see how we will respond to pressure. God has, he has allowed many of us to withstand the pressure of the test that we have experienced. And even some are, are, are under immense pressure, even as I'm talking right now, but I have good news for you this morning, that you have passed the test. That's the good news. You have passed the test. God has given you a critical examination. He has recognized that many of you have the skill to stand up. But on the flip side of that, some of us, are still in that testing period. 
And what God wants to do, he wants to sharpen many of us in the process. He wants to refine us. It's to make you better. That's what it's about. God wants to make us better. It's about making us better. It's about making and allowing us to live life on purpose. Hallelujah. When we look at this passage, I believe David, he realized that he had to go through this test. But he also, he came to the the realization that this test that he was going through, it was not meant to kill him. (laughs) The test was not meant to kill you. Was not meant to kill you, but it was meant to refine you, to sharpen you, to make you better. It was there, as he said in the passage, it was there to push him. And that's what God is doing for many of us. He's pushing us. He's pushing us even closer to him. That's what's supposed to happen. (laughs) <laughs> Don't run away from God. But God is saying, I put the test or put you in the test to push you closer to me. God is saying, come closer to me. Don't run away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He had to go through... T- to know how to persevere and withstand God's pushing. (laughs) When God pushes you, he pushes us to another level. He lifts us up so that now we are proof that he lives on the inside of us. We are God's evidence. Yes. When somebody wants to know, okay, does God really, yeah, I'm the evidence because he pushed me into purpose. He pushed me to another level. He pushed me into purpose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is saying, don't abandon your hope because without hope, You cannot operate in faith. Don't abandon your hope. Because without hope, you cannot operate in faith. The writer in Hebrews 11, he tells us that now faith is the, help me, Monty, (laughs) is the substance of things hoped for. <laughs> it's the evidence of things not seen. But in Hebrews 10, a chapter before, he said, so do not throw away your confidence because it will be richly rewarded. But as I was going through and reading I love the Message Bible. It it, it became Raymond to me. This is what it said. It says, so don't throw it all away now. (laughs) That told me I've come too far. I've made too much progress. I've come too far to act stupid now. (laughs) It says, you were sure of yourselves then. Ha. But know that it's, a, it's still a sure thing. <laughs> but you need to stick it out. Stand with God's plan so you'll be there for the, plum, the promise completion. We got to stick it out, y'all. <laughs> There's some things we don't like. There's some things that we don't understand. But we got to stick it out. Hallelujah, because there is a promised completion. Hallelujah. But then it also goes on to say, it won't be long now. Look at your neighbor and say, it won't be long now. 
<laughs> it won't be long now. Because it goes on to say he's on the way. Woo! That just witnessed to me. <laughs> and it, it, is, it, it says that he'll show up. Hallelujah. Most any minute. That means you got to have a spirit of expectation. You have to have a spirit that God is going to do it at any minute now. God is going to show up when I need him. God is going to show up in your time of need. Let me slow down for a second. I ain't ready to go there yet. Hallelujah. But I feel it. I'm getting my push. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't be so quick to give up on God. Don't be so quick to run away from his plans because his plans are better than yours just because there's a delay does not mean that his answer is no the answer may be me it may mean that it's not yet hallelujah it may mean that it's not yet hallelujah but know that he will show up on time. Hallelujah. There are many in a not yet season. But if you stay faithful to God and you stay faithful to his plan, if you remain diligent to his word, it will come to pass. It will happen for you in due season Paul said if you re if you hold on and you don't faint you're going to reap in due season I believe God is bringing many of us into a due season I'm one of his candidates and I believe I got some more people in the house that he's bringing us to a due season. I'm standing and I'm waiting on God to bring me into my due season. And I know that he's going to bring it. He's going to fulfill his purpose in me. When we stay with God's plan for our lives, we will experience good success. He's going to make you good. He's going to make you successful. He's going to make you influential. He's going to give you favor. He's going to cause you to walk into things that you don't un understand. He's going to cause you to know that it was him who caused you not to die. But he's causing you to live with power and authority. Hallelujah. 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 We have to remind ourselves of the feeling that when he brought us out before, that he will do it again. And I'm saying, God, do it again. God, do it again. I know that you did it before. I'm a witness that you made good on the promise that you gave me. And God, I'm holding, I'm holding, I'm trusting. I'm depending on your word that you will do it again. Say, God, do it again. Hallelujah. God will show up, and he'll show up all time. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I'm a witness that when I was in trouble, 
God showed up and I believe that I got a few witnesses here that God he will show up show up show up all time hallelujah hallelujah and then the last point that I want to leave with you is that we will be able to identify even with David that as he declared that there's safety in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. David got to a place in his testimony and he discovered that there was safety in the sanctuary. We must realize that our safety it lies in our hope and in the sanctuary of his presence. David had been exiled from the sanctuary, but he rejoiced when he was able to publicly declare who delivered him, who set him free from the hand of the enemy. And we must even declare with our own mouths that it was God who brought us. It was God who's keeping us. It was God who didn't allow me to die. But I lived to declare his works and the testimony of his goodness. Hallelujah. The sanctuary, it represents a place of victory. It's a place where others will know that you live through it. It's a safe place, hallelujah, that will cause you not to die. It's a place of thanksgiving, hallelujah. It's a place where you acknowledge God, that God will do what he said. He will do what he said. God is not going to let you die where you are, but it's going to cause you to live, live, live. There's a hymn that we sing sometimes, and it said, look and live. Look to Jesus now and live, because it's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. That means praise to God. And if you only look to Jesus and live, God is saying live, live, live. Look at your neighbor and tell him live. Go through it. Live. Go through it. Live. Go through it. Hallelujah. God wants your testimony to be that I survived the test and I'm better because of what I went through. I'm better because I had to go through the process. I'm better. I'm wiser. I'm stronger. Thank you, Marvin Sapp. I never would have made it. I never would have known you. I never would have known you would be able to bring me out. I got some witnesses here today to know that God will bring you out. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Won't he do it? He'll fight your battles. He'll get you through the hard place. He'll get you through the test. Hallelujah. He'll get you through the messy seasons in your life. Yes, he will. I'm a witness that God will do it. Do I have any witnesses that God will do it? He'll cause you to live through your season of lack and hard times. He'll cause you to live to a season called better. Better! 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 God is saying better! Better! Hallelujah! Better! Call 
want you to live through it. Hallelujah. On purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To know that he did it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's safety in God's sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody standing. Hallelujah. Woo. I lived through it. Ha! And I didn't die. Ha! Ha! And the truth be told, many of you are in it now. But the good news is, you ain't gonna die. You, you, I know good English. I'm, I have a degree and I'm working on a second one. You will not die. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you will not die where you are, even in the season where you are. It may seem like a crazy season. It may seem like a, a, a season you've never experienced in your life. But I declare right now that you will not die. You will not die. Hallelujah. Declare to yourself, I will not die. And I say it even to those who are watching right now. You will not die. I'm declaring it to be so. I speak life. I sp Hallelujah. I speak life to dead things. Things that have come to be, in a, be a hindrance. I speak life. It is cursed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your reminder that, God, we can live through our circumstances. We can live through our hard seasons. We can live through seasons that we don't understand. But, God, thank you for causing us to know that you will help us get to that place. God, thank you. For, us, for allowing us to not die while we were in the process. And God, I even pray for those who are now in a process that God, that you will push them closer to you. Push them to their purpose. Push them to another level in you, God. God, I thank you for completing some things in the lives of your people. Thank you for resurrecting purpose. Thank you, God, for resurrecting vision. Thank you, God, for now even resurrecting passion for ministry, passion for souls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, God, if there's someone here today that does not know you as their Lord and Savior, God, touch their heart even now. Cause them to know that, number one, you live and that there is no other God like you. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. And God, we are here to acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your greatness in this place. Now, God, speak to those who are in need of you as their Lord and Savior. Now, God, speak to those who 
who are even in a process and they feel like they're at the end of their road. They feel like they're not going to make it. Speak to their hearts right now, God. Cause them to know that you are there. Cause them to know that you are ready and willing to help them and to carry them through. God, we acknowledge your presence in this place. We acknowledge your presence. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you, again, if you never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I invite you to come. If you're here today and you'd like to obtain or receive special prayer, I invite you to come to the altar. If you're here this morning and you'd like to receive communion, we will have communion available to my left. Amen.